you spend all this time as a gold prospector imagining finding you know that perfect situation the gravel bar that's been untouched for decades you show up you go you dig and you come home and you've got your loot you know you've got whatever half an ounce a day ounce a day I don't know where the number is that would really make me happy but I, I imagine finding that and is it the gold is it getting home and having something to prove for my efforts is it my way of showing the world that maybe I'm good at what I do or something because I found gold or is it is it that that pursuit that journey and I'm not really sure what it is but at the moment I've, I've spent a few days searching digging getting frustrated can't find gold here can't find gold here what are people gonna think if I go on a five-day trip and come home with less than a gram of gold and then now I found some gold behind me here suns in my eyes so I'll keep pointing it in this direction it's it's gold it's gonna probably pay the bills for this trip and in many ways like is that everything that I ever wanted am I out here I've got a boat that works one of the things I love about gold mining is engineering my way out of a problem you know coming up with a better mouse trap how do I solve this problem how do I do that better but I've kind of engineered my way out of that joy because everything works you know put gravel into high banker gold comes out take the gold home and at this point I'm basically just digging and so it's almost like I need to reframe my expectation of the situation maybe what I really want is to live out of a tent by the side of the river and drink filtered water straight from the river because well the water I brought from home is quickly running out and I'm, I'm living like that pioneer, you know, out in the middle of nowhere, digging for gold. And maybe the missing ingredient is just not enough gold. But then how much gold is enough gold? So these are all questions that I'm kind of sorting through in my head right now. And all I can really come up with is part of this, you know, enjoying the journey. Maybe, maybe life isn't about that end destination. It's about the hunt to get there. And is this really a pause in that hunt is this digging every single day to find gold getting in the way of you know finding that dream location that I've always been wondering maybe maybe it's out there I gotta go find it maybe all I really need to do right now is enjoy the dig these are thoughts that go through my head when I'm tired and too lazy to actually get working and every time I actually you know pick up that shovel the action starts to happen, you get into a meditative state, you're focused on what you're doing. And I do enjoy just digging. But when the mind starts spinning and starts wondering, and what is there, you know, what's next, what should I be going for? That's, that's what gets me tripped up out here. Especially when I'm very tired. <sighs> but yeah, the sun is broken through the clouds. I've got my basics dealt with for the day. Solar charging my power unit here. Fuel in the pump, ready to rock and roll. So I guess I might as well start digging now. So first on the to-do list today is I realized I'm carrying a little more weight than I need to. At the moment, I'm using a bucket to collect my coarse tailings, and then I just sort of tip the bucket and toss it off over here, and it allows me to spread these out over a large area so that I can keep the high banker in one spot without developing a giant pile that I have to then shovel down. Um, this bucket, no matter how good the screen is working, every once in a while you do get some organics that go through, little spurt of water shoots down, and by the time the bucket is full of rocks, about 50% of the time, it's also full of water. So I figured I've got an awl on this knife, and I'm going to punch some holes around the bottom, because I use this bucket exclusively to get rid of my coarse tailings. I might as well not carry all of the water every time I do that as well. Aha. Say we're on to something with this. Well, it's working. Water's going out the holes, but I might as well give the screen a brush so that I don't actually have water going in the bucket. That's all I need to feel like I have a purpose. Some sort of an engineering solution to a problem that I didn't even know I had before. 
and I just love that I solved it with the old Swiss Army knife. <sighs> now that I'm feeling good and accomplished in my life, you know, I poked holes in a bucket solving problems in this world. Now, now I can find that true inner peace in my beings for the rest of the day. That is the first, uh, the first 105 shovels. And I just want to show you the tailings. Woo! So basically I just toss the bucket into this area right here. And I have no pile under my hive anchor. And that's 105 shovels in. So, well, it seems like, why are you throwing this bucket? It's just into this area. And it's a lot of work to take a hundred shovels worth of tailings and scrape them all out with a shovel. And even if you do that for the first two, three hundred shovels, as you move up from there, I mean, it just gets into this giant pile. So it's working for me. The holes drilled in the bottom of the bucket are working great. So I'm just throwing rocks, not rocks and water. And I'm gonna move on out into this direction before slotting this into the next spot about six to eight feet forwards. I know the reason you guys watch this channel is for useless statistics like exactly how many shovels I have dug so far today. I'm not going to do that today, but if you do want to watch me count to 1,620, click the little thingy up in one of the corners here and you can watch that video. I think I found about six grams that day. Instead, I'm going to give you some more interesting statistics like fluid. I have drank two liters of water so far today and running this beautiful high banker. I happen to have put one liter of gasoline through this pump. So there you have it, two liters of water, one liter of gasoline. These are some fun statistics we can watch grow and I don't have to lose my mind trying to count to, you know, over a thousand. Now that brings me to this little fella right here. This is the a Fury or a fairy. I think it's a hard E, I don't know. The A Fury Power Station. Um, basically, I'm using this guy to run my CPAP machine for better sleeps and charging my phone. I've got a little uh, speaker. I've been blasting some tunes while I'm digging and it's been keeping up great. And I've got this folding, it's just a 60 watt solar panel. It's super, super cheap panel. And if we have a little look-see here, what do we got? We are charging at 41 watts right now. What's really cool is there's, you probably won't be able to see anything right now in the daytime, but there's a little gauge that tells you, hey, here's how many hours you have left. So when I'm going to bed at night and I got the CPAP run and I can look over and be like, yeah, it looks like I can sleep for three more nights if I never charge this thing. Now that I've got the solar panel on it, it shows me, hey, you'll be fully charged again in seven hours with this sort of indirect sunlight. I guess I can probably, you know, point this at the sun a little bit better. But uh, it got me thinking, like, I'm going to be moving to Australia um, in the next few months here. And when I do, I'm going to need to buy another power plant, my pump. So this Honda WX15 is the bomb diggity it's awesome it weighs about 20 pounds puts out more than enough water for what i need and the reason i got it over the wx10 is because i can run this at like half throttle and it's a lot quieter versus the wx10 which would have to run at full throttle um and pretty much any situation i've future proofed myself for larger bigger high bankers but really it's more than i need and what if i mean a lot of guys are running electric they're these little bilge pumps so if they can engineer like a 6,000 pound, 1,000 horsepower super sedan that can drive 500 kilometers down the highway, I might as well have my own 
Tesla prospecting rig. So with something like this, you you could just buy a battery, right? You can you can just get um, you can even get like these lithium iron phosphate batteries, and you can charge them off solar and everything as well. But this guy right here, it's got an 800 watt inverter, so I can I can run a toaster, a blender, even like a small kettle off the side of this thing, and you've got your 12 volt to run your bilge pump and everything. You can simultaneously be running your bilge pump and charging off solar, and for whatever reason, this little unit, it's about the same size as my Jackery, weighs, I think, five and a half kilos. This thing can charge at 200 watts solar. So you could essentially run indefinitely your little bilge pump, especially out in the Australian outback. Like, get my solar, got this thing, drive out somewhere, and I wouldn't ever have to worry about running out of batteries. You just bring a big enough solar panel. And these days, these things are actually affordable. Um, and then of course, it's got all the other built-in electronics, got a little light, it's got these USB-C ports so you can, you can charge stuff. And one of them happens to be a 100 watt power delivery port, which is meaningful because you can charge your laptop directly off that USB-C. And it's more efficient than running off of the, uh, the AC power off the side there. So, I mean, a theory or a fairy, a fairy, they gave me this thing and it's it's been impressing me. I've, I just, I like it. Another cool feature, like they've got this little tray in the top and I was like, oh, that's weird. It'll just collect rain or something, but you're never gonna store this out in the rain anyways. And anytime that I'm carrying stuff around, I have my phone in here. It's like a tray where you can set all your stuff while it's plugged in. It's just, it's been super useful. I'm, I'm really enjoying this thing out here. So that's my little plug for the uh, A Fury power bank. And it would be nice to have a quiet setup. Not all situations can be run off electric. Um, there's, there's certain advantages to having a gas pump where you can just pump way up a gravel bar, especially on the bigger rivers, like if you're out in the Fraser River, for example. Um, it, way up that bank, it might be handy to have the power of gas. But when I move to Australia, I'm, I'm thinking of using a power bank like this or a power station like this and, and just combining it with solar and building a high banker around what I can get from today's lithium ion battery technology. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Anyways, like I said, two liters into me, one liter into the pump. And I think it's time to put some calories into me as well. Cause I mean, it's only two hours digging. You think you can do this, but day after day after day, it, uh, I'm still working on the fitness. By the end of the year, maybe I'll start getting into that eight hours a day of digging, but I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna aim for six hours a day on this trip, unless I get real ambitious and caffeinated. <sighs> Moving ground though, tell you what, since everything's shut off, let's have a quick look at Goldfingers and see if there's any gold in the box, a little golden motivation. And uh, once, I've, once I've had a peek in, then yeah, I can sort of feed myself, take a quick stretch break, and then we'll get back to doing things. All right, what do we have? Okay, yeah. We're showing some gold here, boys and girls. It's definitely starting to show up on the surface there. So that is a good sign. How's the box look? Definitely um, get the shadow of this phone out of the image here for you. You can definitely see there's a lot more garnet in this area. That uh, beautiful pink colored stuff. Is there anything? Let me just take you out of the tripod here. And I'll put the focus enhancer on so we can get right up close. Are we seeing any visible gold down here? Yeah. I'd say there's definitely some. Interesting. Uh, just like cool colored rocks and stuff. Can't say it's looking crazy rich, but again, this is two hours, so... I'm happy with that. Figured I should probably show you what I'm actually digging right now. I just did a whole stint of test pans here. So 
to get that focus enhancer on. I mean, it's just, yeah, there's gold, but it's not, it's not what, you know, it's not what I should be digging. It's probably about one third of what I should be digging right now. So essentially, my, my thought process is the last time I got out mining, it was a five day trip with my friend Chris, and then it was about almost two months of nothing. And so those first two days I was prospecting, I was looking for the good ground, and by day three, I was just like, nope, I'm just setting up to dig, it's time to dig. And the reality of the situation is I needed to dig. It was it just, you know, it's feels good to get out and actually move some ground, and I wanted something to show for the trip. And it's very easy to get discouraged when you're not finding what you're looking for. But of course, now that I've got some digging, you know, I've got some digging done, I'm, I'm tired of, like, okay, so now I'm thinking what I really need to be doing is out prospecting for something that's about three times as good as this. I would aim for that 300 colors per shovel as where I would want to start digging. But since I'm here, since I'm already set up, um, there's a decent place to camp. I think I am gonna finish off today just digging this ground and it'll be a good reminder of, okay, what is what is actually in this ground? Like what's the grams per hour or, you know, points of grams per hour. This trip will basically get that out of my system. It'll get that digging. I'll be tired. I can get back home. I can edit some videos. I can do the clean outs. I can see a little gold and I can be like, all right, reality check. I need to find better color. And because I'm not so, you know, <laughs> shovel sick from not being able to shovel, my next trip, I've, I'm going to go to a new river that I've never been to before. And the whole point of this trip is going to be to obviously have a good time and camp, but to explore. And I just, I really want to put the time into the new gravel bars and really have a look at what's potentially out there with no pressure to actually find anything. So if I start the trip like that, then I can spend the entire time panning because whenever you're set up someplace, that's time you're not spent prospecting better ground. Of course, every minute you're spent prospecting better ground is time you're not set up digging. It's a balance right now, mentally, I need to dig. But I think as soon as this trip's over, it's going to be a proper adventure and I want to find better ground. That is all raked. So at least I have like, while I'm digging now, I don't need to think. It's all prepared. And that literally took like, a couple minutes to rake just you know that entire line of boulders <laughs> not boulders but you know that's definitely coarse tailings that i no longer need to move out of the way so yeah i'm just going to skim the surface of this see if i can do this real quick and then i'm going to reassess whether it's time to move today or not I just wanted to demonstrate how this type of gravel can make any high banker look really, really good. So this hopper, as well as most other hoppers, this is mostly sand and gravel, and it's reasonably loose. There's a few of these larger rocks here that I've just raked off the surface ahead of time. It took about two minutes to do this entire patch. 
And I'm just gonna set this up pointed at the hopper so you can see how quickly it handles material. And this is sort of one of those situations where, like obviously it'd be better if you had more gold, but to be able to just throw material in here very, very quickly, it's something that you could not do with a normal eight to 12 inch wide high banker. You just flat board it, it would be too much. Um, or you'd have to run too much slope and too much water and you might lose some of that fine gold retention. So in this case, due to the fact that there's actually two sluices, one on top of each other, you can see this water flow down here is very relaxed. And the water flow up here is just, well, not so relaxed. So I'm gonna set this up and just hammer shovels through as quickly as I can. And it'll just really make this, you know, <laughs> makes it look good. I think anything would look good in this case because basically as quick as a shovel can hit that hopper, it's chewed up and through the sluice. There you have it, boys and girls. The world's finest pipe anchor that can swallow material. Let's see how the sluice is looking after that. Decent amount of action happening down there. Still very active. So, I mean, that's probably pushing it as far as uh, production capacity goes. But if you don't have a heavy black sand load per shovel, I mean, th that light stuff washes away really easily. It's when you get into like really heavy black sand, that's what might slow a box down. So if you were mining on a beach where every shovel is like a full, you know, quarter cup or something of black sand or a cup of black sand, any sluice is gonna slow down a fair bit. And that's, I guess, a situation where if you have a magnet to pre-remove your black sand, Assuming your black sand is mostly magnetic. The stuff I found on this river, whenever I test it, I would argue that less than 50%, sometimes as little as about 30 or maybe even only 25% is actually magnetic. And the rest is non-magnetic. But some areas it's about 50-50. So arguably, if you're dealing with a heavy black sand area, having some sort of magnetic separation would be a pretty cool feature. But I'm kind of just brute forcing through that with a 24 inch wide sluice. It's got some some weight to it in this little sluice tray here. I'm just gonna tip some water out so that I don't have to worry about floating gold leaving the box. Once this gets full of delicious yummy gold. All right. Get up close and personal with it. So. I mean, I don't know how this comes through on camera, but just the coloration of all of that beautiful, beautiful garnet, black sand. I am loving that. It was just an experiment where I, I threw some raised expanded aluminum on top of what I already had in the hopper. And my theory is that if I was a gold nugget and this was empty, and active like it currently is I might get caught in here now I didn't bring any of my gold nuggets in order to test this theory yet but uh, it didn't seem to get in the way of the shoveling I caught a nail rusty old nail so maybe my uh, maybe my nugget trap is actually worth something after all There's actually some gold visible underneath where that expanded was. Pretty cool. And this is the unbacked and it sits on top of conveyor belt. 
figured that would just give me a little better bite with the uh, extreme water flow that's going on up there. I'll get home, I'll be like, I should have kept digging there, there was so much gold. Gotta get you up here to see this. See this good action right here. Big muddy pan, and look at that smile. That is not too bad to look at at all. There you go. So, there's obviously a lot more than that in the hopper. So we might be onto something. This is obviously a lot easier when the box is empty. Uh, when it's full, it adds about another, I think it's about nine kilograms to the weight. But yeah, you just kind of, with it fully up and assembled, except for the legs, just sort of shoulder it and you can walk a fair distance like that. Yeah. Something to work on, how to make it easier to carry around, but yeah, that actually works really well. When I run for several hours, I get roughly eight to nine kilograms of concentrates. Of course, this depends on how much black sand I get in an area. When I get home, sort of a three-step process. Step one, I classify everything to a 20 mesh. Anything that is larger than the 20 mesh is very easy to pan out, so I will pan that all out. And anything that goes through this 20 mesh goes to step two, which is my cleanup sluice. Everything plus 20 into the gold pan. And next round. The tiny gold dust just likes to stick to everything, so you gotta make sure you rinse it real nice. Now everything in this tub, I'm gonna put back in the bucket to be fed through the cleanup sluice. You can see that gold showing up nicely here. One of the things with this mat is it really shows off the gold. So it might look like there's a ton of gold in here and I might get a little too excited, but actually it's it's just really stripping away all the black sand so it looks like it's more than it actually is. So it's doing a really good job. Kind of amazing, even with this water flow, how much gold actually just shows up in the top B matting. Pure gold up at the top, quite thick, very nice. And if we walk this down to the very bottom of the top sluice, you can see there's noticeably less gold down here, but when you're dealing with a large amount of gold, or at least relatively large, you would want to take all of the concentrates. If this sluice was all you had, um, you would want to run these twice, or you would want to make sure that you fed them a lot slower the first time. We come down to the uh, bottom here. You can see there's a, a fair bit of gold down here, but nothing crazy. Again, I did feed this very quickly, and we've got a third layer down below, which has almost nothing in it. Here's one final look after having shut off the water flow. You can get really, really close. You can see just how fine and flat all of these gold flakes are. I'm going to slide you down the sluice here. Just look at the garnets, the black sand, the gold. Looks really good. At this point, what I'm going to do, I've got one of these containers. Uh, it fills up just the very bottom of one of these containers. I'll get you a weight so you know how many grams we're dealing with with this much surface area of the VDR sluice. But it goes into here, and then I have another clean out from the trip, so I'm going to go do that, make it into another bucket, and, and then basically once every... Thing is in separate containers like this from the cleanup sluice it goes to the next stage which is the miller table and we'll get to that one next those are rich looking concentrates now i'm going to set these on the scale here and wet but with most of the water poured out and the container 227.4 grams so 
that is the total amount of concentrates that I get out of all three levels of that uh, VDR cleanup sluice. Works really good. This stage of the process, I'm using something called a Miller table. It's basically just a flat sheet with a very slight texture on it. It's one of these Hobbyco cutting mats. You want your water to be distributed as evenly as possible across your surface here. So I've got an old piece of, this is like rock guard. It's not a good miner's moss to mine gold with because it's a little too coarse, but it's just a scrap that helps spread the water out from this spray bar, which just has a bunch of little holes drilled in it. And essentially it works because gold is fine and flat. So if I can get a spoon here. Black sand is fine and round. So the black sand rolls off, the gold stays right tight to the surface and doesn't want to leave. Now this is a particularly rich spoon of concentrates. It's taken right off the top of this little container. And oddly, the top of these concentrates are richer than the bottom because the bucket that I poured them from, you know, put the basically the less concentrated stuff at the bottom and the most concentrated at the top. Unless I were to shake these down or whatever. But yeah, basically you just spoon everything onto here. I'm dealing with about 225 grams, roughly, of concentrates. And just by roughly looking at this, I'm going to increase the angle of the table by, you know, one more shim. And then I can start, you know, brushing this off. But I won't bore you too much with this process because I have a whole video on how to use this thing that you can go check out. I just had to pause feeding the Miller table for a second to show you the spoon I just took. Um, like the gold seems to be settled on top because that's how it came out the bucket. See a little floating gold actually on the surface of the water there. Make sure that that all goes below the surface there. But yeah, it is uh, quite rich. Don't get excited because it always looks like more than it actually is, but I'm, I'm actually I'm a little bit impressed at this point. Coming up at the end, I actually just put a drop of Jet Dry into this thing of concentrates because there's too much floating gold. So if you're having that issue, just Jet Dry directly into your tub here and then continue spooning. I think at this point I've overloaded this a little bit and it's always kind of nice to watch this get my shadow out of the way. You just sort of across the flow, very, very gently agitate that surface. It'll help get things moving again. And I always start at the bottom, so you have an area without any black sand built up that can clean itself out for the gold to stick to. And then you just work your way up from there. It's kind of spreading everything across the table so that it can nice and evenly get sorted out. All done and brushed off. The vigilant amongst you may notice just how much gold has actually migrated down to the bottom of this and then even a little bit down into that tub. Now, due to the quantity of material that I'm working with, I basically just take it back out of that tub to be rerun at the end of the year. And the alternative being I, I spend about twice as long actually brushing it and being a little bit more careful with it. So for me, it's, it's worth having to run it again. You know, it's good when it's a double snuff. All right, we'll clean up the rest of that, but we have fully filled the cone. This might actually be over five grams or bang on five grams. Let's let it dry and get a weight. That is the weight of this tray with that tape on it. I always weigh on the same day with the same scale just to be as consistent as I can. All right, that location was way better than I was expecting it to be. I definitely saw some gold in that clean out. I knew I was gonna find some gold. Just like last week, my expectations uh, versus the reality in this case, I found a lot of gold. Um, so, you know, it was pastry 
kept on going. It was just really petering off. And at the time out there, I was like, eh, I don't know if it's really worth continuing here. Like, what am I actually getting per hour? Um, I was getting into a nice groove of, of moving dirt, getting shovels through everything before this scale stops showing the number. I'm just going to, I'm going to let you see the number because I was impressed. It looks like a lot and I sort of talked myself into, it's not really that much. So I zeroed out this scale. Uh, that, that number has been shifting a little bit. But right there, we'll call it 7.28. Get you a close up. Let's see, it's nicely piled up there. Sorry about the camera work. Let's just uh, shake that out a little bit. Yeah, it's all powder. And. 7.28 or 7.29, I'll go 7.28 grams of gold. That was a wonderful afternoon. Um, just, I don't know, it, uh, it goes to show you really don't know what you find just by counting colors. I went over this last week, but the, it shows value to like a certain area of the province or wherever you are digging, whatever you find in your pan, it could mean one number, it could mean a completely different number. More than double what I was expecting again. And I'm, I'm saying that's a pleasant surprise. So there you go. Over seven grams of gold. The, uh, the bottle is slowly going to be filling. In fact, I should go fill that bottle right now. Scale I normally use only goes up to 100 grams. So mm -hmm. due to the weight of the actual glass, uh, I have to switch over to a different scale. But uh, yeah, we've got, I forget, I think it's 14 and a half grams in here already. And uh, let's add another 7.28. Seven point two. A little loose gold here in the tray. Scale doesn't have the as accurate of a reading. Well, we'll do math to actually figure out what's in here, but uh, so far, so good. Um, since I'm filming this all sort of on the same day, I still haven't added my five grams or almost five grams from last week. So I'll have to add that, but man, there's a long way to go. That was a, that was an ambitious goal. Don't get me wrong. That is beautiful. And that really does look good on camera, but uh, yeah, we've got, we've got a long, long way to go. Anyways, until next time, cheers everyone, and thank you for watching.